Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Infinite Pass Log. As always, it's me, Ricardo. I'm me, Todd. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Mad World for the Wii. Yeah. Developed by Sega. The game, not the no, song. No, not developed by Sega. I screwed that up. <laughs> Platinum Games. I, I can't believe I said developed that. Developed by Platinum. Platinum, the best. Now, before we continue on with Mad World, I want to uh, tell the viewers that both me and Todd are in love with Platinum. They are, in my opinion, the best developer out there at this moment. For action, for action games. games. Yeah, for action, for action games. We, we've had a bit of a love for some of the action games for a little while now, from uh, Mad World to Bayonetta to Vanquish, and more recently, Metal Gear Rising. Oh, Metal Gear Rising. Oh, 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 oh. And that's for another episode. Yeah, boy. On this one, we're talking about Mad World. Um, Which? Mad World? Well, uh, Mad World for us has been a bit of a love affair for quite a while, but until we kind of sat down and spoke it over, we, we've we now come across a couple more flaws than we realised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, let's go with the history of how we were exposed to this game. Um, it was released on March 10th, 2009, but I didn't get around to Mad World until probably 2011, so about two years after the game was released. At first, to me, the game was always advertised as a violent game, which, you know, that's a plus. It definitely is a plus. But it was always on the coattails of No More Heroes. They always compared it to No More Heroes, and No More Heroes is a game I personally really love. And hearing that, I'm like, ah, it's not a No More Heroes title, so I ignored it for a really long time. And then I found it in a bargain bin at a, like a $5 shop. And I was like, I got to get this. It's cheap. I was already in love with Platinum at that point. So I was like, I'm going to buy it. I had fun with it. Uh, what about you, Todd? Well, for me, I think I played it 2011. I think I played not long after you, actually, if I remember rightly. Um, so maybe you watching me stream it. Um, and you were like, yeah, yeah, we were both going on about how good it was. Um, but I picked it up cheap, bargain bin. I was looking to get it for quite a while anyway, because I heard about it quite a lot before it came out. I didn't get a Wii till quite late. Well, I say late, you know, a couple of years after it came out kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think it was 2011 I sort of picked up and I played it, and I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and until I sort of started playing it, I, I didn't really know too much about Platinum, and then I sort of started looking into their past, and that I loved a lot of the games that a lot of the people in Platinum had already worked on from obviously being ex-Clover Studios. So yeah. that's where my love affair kind of grew. It's more from Clover than Mad World itself. Um, but yeah, like the things they were doing with, you know, on the Wii that no one else was really doing, it kind of intrigued me quite a bit. Yeah. Now we have to start talking about the game itself. Like, actual valid points, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the game is a third-person third person action beat-em-up game. Uh, you take the role of Jack. He doesn't have a last name in this game, right? right? I don't... Jack Kamen? So. I think it's Jack Kamen. <laughs> this, uh, we're both going off recollection here, and it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it's Jack Kamen, played by uh, Steve Bloom. Yep, it's Jack Kamen. Um, he's got he's got a chainsaw arm uh, very similar to Ash from the Evil Dead series. I was gonna say, think Evil Dead. Yeah. Uh, you open up in a sectioned off city, so similar to like uh, Batman, a previous game we talked about. Um, there's like this. What was the uh, exact? Uh, it was a game. It was a game where you have to kill everybody. Yeah, in the it's city. a game. It's like a game show basically. Um, yeah. Where. It's, it's all on camera, and it is just for a group of terrorists called the Organizers. Yeah. So, it, it's a very basic story. It works for the violence. It gives you a point, a reason why you're doing all this. And you're not killing innocents. You're killing people, bloodthirsty... I think they mentioned criminals. Yeah. But these people are out to kill for money, and you're killing them to sort of stop that and also get money. You're not necessarily playing the good guy or the best guy around. But Jack Kamen's actually a really cool character. I'm very fond of him. Uh, he definitely grew on me throughout the, the playthrough of the game. He, Yeah, he's... It's, I don't really know how to describe his character type. 
uh, he's similar to Snake. Yeah. Now I'm playing a lot of Metal Gear at this point, <laughs> so the Snake <laughs> reference is going to be high on your list. Oh, very, um, very high. I don't know. He's kind of like the gruff kind of character that really hasn't got a lot to him. If that makes sense, like he's so just there. Any character. Think like Duke Nukem. He's just there to kick ass and go home. That is it. Or pretty much any character that Steve Bloom has voiced in the past like five years that is not Spike Spiegel from uh, <sighs> Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I had to think. I was going to say Space Cowboy, but that's what they say at the end of Cowboy Bebop. Um, um, but yeah, we should probably get on to our major points. I mean, yes. Uh, I think the very... We talked, but we... Well, I was going to just say before, obviously, interrupting. I mean, before I interrupted mm -hmm. you. Um, I think the main thing that's notable just straight from the box art is the art style. Yes. It, it's um, They took a direction, a very bold, I guess, art direction. Everything's in black and white. Apart from it's, blood. It's, uh, apart from blood. Um, it's similar to Sin City, whether you've read the book or watched the movie. Um, it's all in black and white. Blood is red. It's the only color that you'll really see in the game. Red and blue. There's, a, there's blue blood. So you can see that. Um, it's So they, they went with an art style that it, it's cool to look at at first, but in motion... It messes with the eyes. Yeah, it's very uh, it's good <laughs> in terms of like being unique. Um, but especially mm -hmm. go back to playing it now, especially when obviously everyone's quite used to obviously HD graphics and things. It looks quite dated. Um, and yeah, it's not a feast of the eyes. A lot of things can get like hard to see. Um, especially, especially when the game is starting to tell you to find an objective. Yeah. Or certain becomes... items, like you're trying to pick up like a lamppost to shove through someone or something like that. You can't actually see many things around you because it's literally just a, a, like, you know, a stick of white with a bit of black outline and everything looks like that. Yeah, and the level design for later levels are become a nightmare because uh, the areas are poorly lit, so everything is super black yeah and they get quite a lot more complex in the level design so sometimes it's hard to tell you know what's actually a wall and what's actually just like becoming a hill if you know what i mean like it's yeah it's just ridiculous sometimes you can just run into a wall and be like oh didn't know that was there yeah and that's that's something with the later levels i feel because the first the opening bit the, the city there's no real theme to it it's cider from it's a Apocalyp uh, apocalyptic city. Yeah, that I feel like that opening is great. And in the opening, those it's first like, two levels, you kind of go from like it's kind of like the areas like room to room kind of thing. So yeah. they're quite small areas, whereas later on you just sort of go into like a big level that you can run around in, and that's when it gets more complicated. Yeah, because I will stick to like the first two levels, the uh, city and then the Chinatown level. Uh, those are great great levels um the yeah. game uh rewards the player in how creative they are in their kills um you can just like throw a tire onto a dude then jam like a, a signpost through his head and then throw him into a, dub a dumpster that has spikes uh on the lid that cuts him right in half and you know the more that you do that kind of stuff the more points you get so there's uh incentive to do all these things and find all these th things and that's why it becomes a problem later on in, in the uh, bigger levels. Yeah, it's sort of everything it feels quite spread fun. out at times. Um, and also, there's a lot of repetition with that. Like, there's quite a, there's a couple of different ways of killing people, but that's it. Yeah. That is it. It's weird, because before we, we recorded here, we, we have a list of points that we always do for our podcast. And... I have it listed, very gameplay. There is very gameplay, but it's all the same. It's this weird thing. Um, the game it's varied in the first does... two or three levels, and then that's it. Yeah. It's just, that is it. But the environment's all varied, but the actual things you do in them, don't. Well, they try to, they try to spice it up with the mini-games that the Black Baron introduces, which I should mention, the Black Baron, fantastic character, he introduces all the mini games and ends up dying at the end of each introduction. Um, it's always great, but 
you know, they, they try to vary it up with the games, uh, those little mini games. You know, you have the firework one where you have to throw dudes into the uh, the firework setup and shoot them up into the air. Yeah. I thought that was fun. And there was the um, one where you had to get the bullseye on the dartboard as well, wasn't it? Yeah, there's the bullseye one, there's the uh, air turbine one, which I thought that was kind of cool. You just had to chuck people into the air turbine, didn't you? Into the, yeah, it was just... into the, like, jet motor. <laughs> Yeah, it was just fun. It was just that little <laughs> fun thing. Um, later levels, it's weird. In the idea, the execu the idea of it is like brutal, but the execution of it, the actual viewing of it, is kind of boring. Because later, like later on, there's like this one challenge. You have to throw guys into a black hole. I can see where the game designers were coming from. Like all black holes, we don't know what they are. They're a mysterious thing. But the act of it is just throwing a guy into a hole. He swirls around for a bit and then disappears. It's boring. Yeah. And that level already was annoying to begin with. It's, so it's like they kind of put all their eggs in one basket, and then they ran out of eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty Which, much what it's like. You know what? They they were really trying. It's their first title. This is Platinum's first title as an independent company, and they were really trying to hit, hit it real home, but. It just, it gets really close. It gets so close, because there's so many good things. I mean, if it like was the released now on PC as, like, an indie title, it would get Raven reviews. Oh, it would. But It would. But it would have to be shorter, I feel. It would definitely have to be a lot shorter. Oh, well, no, I think, I think even for the length it is, it would still get great reviews as, like, a first title. But I think, because it was on the Wii, it was more adult, and everything on the Wii at the time was all casual, casual, casual for a lot of people, in terms of like how yeah. it was selling, that was the public image of it. It didn't have the right market. So no, I think that's definitely... kind of like its downfall. If you were to play it now, and you played it on PC or something, people would be like, this is actually a really well designed game. Yeah. Well, I, 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 there's issues, but like, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> there are things like... I have very fond memories. I, I have the soundtrack on my phone. I've got the soundtrack like, CD. I had to buy it after playing the game. It's, it's a great, it's a great soundtrack. It, it's it's a mix of rap, hip hop, rock, all these crazy things, and it fits the mood. Yeah. Like the game definitely has a mood it wants to portray, and it fits it perfectly. And it's all original soundtrack. Like you could, you, yeah. you like seriously, it's all from, like the people they get to do the actual soundtrack are actual artists and. You can find other music they've done, but it's just one of those things. They've like Platinum wrote the songs based on the game. Like it, you wouldn't believe it though. If you heard, if you heard one of the artists have that song on their album, you'd just be like, "Yeah, it's another hip hop track." Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. believable to be someone else's music when it's actually video game music. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's one of those weird things, but they it's one of those things where the game design or like the game planning was was side and side, you know, they like they had a control they said to the, the musicians like, Hey, we wanna do this and they did that. And it it, it mixes so well. Yeah. And um, when you've got the music pumping, like especially when you've got some a really good soundtrack on a level, you know, it kind of makes you forget about the repetition of the gameplay because it, there's something else that, like, when you've got good music, it gets you going, and when you've got the music paired with the commentators in each of the levels as well, it, that's one. That's what the memories are actually from, and why I'm so fond of it is because of that. Yeah, now those those guys were great. Um... John DiMaggio, the guy who voices Jake in Adventure Time, that's his more famous role. He's great in this game. Like, we, ne we never see these announcers, uh, Buckshot and uh, Chris Cre uh, Creeley, are the two guys. Um, their commentary is context sensitive to what you're doing. Yeah. Um, you may hear like tracks being repeated from time to time, but they say, they have like a set track of like things they could say, like varied things, the same thing. It's always great. Yeah. Um, they're always making fun of each other too, which is just nice to hear over the violence that you're just beating on everybody. 
it's it's just Life so good. Like every also it's different for every level as well. It's not just context sensitive yeah. for the things you do, it's also each level it's different. So just you're chucking someone in a bin in one level, if you chuck someone in a bin in another level, it'll be a completely different response like a set of responses. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, oh and like that that all comes together in the credits. Like we've got an amazing soundtrack during the credits and the commentators just commenting on the names of all the developers and they're just yeah. taking like the piss out of all the developers by their names. And that's I, I don't remember it too too well, but I do remember like they were just like it was something like with the game director they said, Who's that guy? He made the game or something like along those lines and they said, Ah, screw him. Yeah. Like there's just loads of random things. Obviously some of it's funnier than that. You know. Yeah. It's one of those you had to be there kind of things to find it funny. <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's so good. Yeah. And it, it's sad to, like, because we, we've been talking about it for so long to do this, to do an episode about this game. And we were just like, oh, man, it's a great game. We go to play it, and it's just like, oh, it's, it's not that good. It's fun. It's definitely fun, because that's what Platinum excels in. They know, they I don't know what it is about their game design, but they know how to make a game fun. But it's, it's very... It gets old. I mean, the best way I can describe it, right, is it's looking back back at it from this generation. You can see it's dated. It's not so badly dated, but as soon as we get into the next generation, it's going to be too far gone. I think it's like reminds me of Goldeneye. When the GameCube came along, you still remember Goldeneye being amazing. You still go back to play it. It's not a problem. Then when obviously like the Wii and like PS3 and Xbox 360 come along, you go out to play Goldeneye, fuck me, it's aged badly. It is awful. I think it's going to be like that with Mad World. I think es this generation, especially... we're still going to enjoy it. Next gen, you're just going to be like, yeah, it's had its day. Especially with the motion controls, because it's a Wii title, it has to have motion controls. Um, which is weird, because I don't think... What... Like, any of Jack's normal moves that you could perform, they didn't need the motion controls, right? The right. uppercuts like the, did, um... and the side swipes did. Um, and your dodge needed motion controls, too. Um, really? And then to use the um, chainsaw, you had to use motion controls, too. I thought I thought the chainsaw was just you, 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 you had throw to... it up, and then you press a button. No, you had to press and hold B to actually hold the chainsaw out and then you had to use up or down to with the nunchuck oh. like swinging it to slash um like cut like vertically and sideways to cut obviously them in half oh. um but yeah the, the motion control for the dodging you, have to you just have to shake the nunchuck you just need to shake oh, it and you terrible. backflip no so it's quite quick and easy but it's a pain in the ass oh it is yeah uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be dated with those kind of things. Yeah, it's dated already. Wait until, like, you know, give it another 5-10 years. Like I said, it's going to have the GoldenEye treatment. That's sad, because it is, it's a fun game. And the, I mean, bosses are pretty cool. They were, they were great. They, they were good, but they're not memorable. They no. really aren't. It's, like, there's like three I could remember off the top of my head. The first guy, the gunslinger, the Frankenstein monster. And then the last one. I, mean, the, I don't want to say anything about the last one. The main one, things I remember from Marvel personally is the bus with spikes on the side, which is right near the start of the game. The moving yeah, train you can chuck people in front of. Um, and the castle level where the people that you're fighting are like zombies and they just are relentless and don't give in. And they just Got constantly them. chase you. They don't like dodge or jump back. They all just swarm you. Yeah. yeah. That is the things I remember. Cause that gave me a headache. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see, I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll admit it. I haven't played the game in a while, and I didn't play it before we did the podcast. I just, I'm going off my memory because I do have fond memories of it. But man, just talking about, like, it's bringing back some of that stuff. I'm like, oh no. It's, it's, I remember it. It is one of those games that you remember all the good things, but then actually it's got a lot of bad things. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, 
that's one heck of a way to end an episode, right? Just yeah. a game that we were so hyped for, now it's just it's nothing. Yeah. It's not as good. It's actually pretty disappointing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Because Platinum's such a good developer. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they just got good. Hopefully. I don't want to do this for, like, Rising or Vanquish. <laughs> We're going to do it. But I don't want to, like, look back on Vanquish and say, oh, it was a bad game. I know we we would turn around on Vanquish and say, it's actually a bad game. Yeah. I can... But Rising, I don't want to say that, too. Rising, that Rising's game. not a bad game. We'll be fine there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that's probably it for us now, I think. I don't, I have, yeah. I've ran out of points. I've deleted them all. Yeah, I mean, I, the only thing I could say is that it was a game that we were hyped for, and now I'm just like, huh. You sound like you're going to cry. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like I've ruined your life. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's um, like the day that you told me Goldeneye wasn't good, <laughs> and you were right. <laughs> I I know I was. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for listening, everyone, and uh, see you all soon. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs>